Hi all, welcome back to my studio and welcome back to another segment of Workshop This. My name is Robin McClendon and I do this series every Wednesday. We do this weekly and a lot of times you guys are asking me questions. So I'm gonna address one of my questions today. This question comes from Austin Arnold and he says, Robin, can you share some tips on how to create color palettes for us on our use um, on the gel plate? And that's a good question because you may have some general ideas of the colors that you like to use in your work and maybe you could name two or three or four colors, but do they all work together all the time? Are they the right tones? You know, you might want to expand your palette. How do I do that? How do I expand a palette to something that I know I'm going to like that will work in with my work and I'll use because paints are expensive. Let's face it. So you just want to go into a paint store and just start pulling all these colors off the shelf. You know, one maybe in every area, a yellow, a blue, a green, a red, you know, a purple kind of thing, and then get back and they really don't work together. You're not sure <clears throat> of how to get them to work together. So my number one tip for helping with this, and I do it myself, is go to Pinterest. Pinterest is an amazing visual resource for artists. I think actually it's the top place for us, us as artists to go to and get visual inspiration, ideas around our art, seeing what other people are doing worldwide. Um, it's just great. And I love the Pinterest algorithms because the stuff stays around. You don't have to like dig through people's posts and try to find stuff. You just type it in and everything around that topic pops up. So I would suggest go to Pinterest and put in color palettes. Just put in the word color palettes. And many of them pop up. Now, a lot of them will look like these. I love the ones that have like pictures and then the palettes next to them. And um, you can literally scroll through them and figure out which ones you like. Um, just by looking, uh, the easiest way is to look at a picture. Because I think when you just get a color palette, when you just see these colors, you look at them and say, yeah, I like them but how do they work together? Maybe I'm not too crazy about that green right there. But when you see it in terms of the picture, then you see, ah, oh, that's where that green goes in. Oh, okay. And it helps to bring a more complete color palette. So even if you're just doing abstract work on your plate, um, you're not necessarily doing any particular symbolism. You, you want these colors to work together. You're using stamps or stencils and things like that. Um, so that's what I would do. What I generally do is I go through and I'll sort through a lot of images and then I eliminated them to a few so that I could show you today without it being too overwhelming. And one of the things that um, I always see over and over again in my own work is that my intuitive self, that right brain, that muse, that creative aspect of ourselves like always knows what we need and what we want, which is why I call so many of my techniques intuitive. I got intuitive collage, intuitive scripting, intuitive painting, because it is, I've learned that that gut part, that little part of me that knows what I want, I just go with it. So go to Pinterest, put in color palettes and just go through and just even look at the pictures. Oh, I like that picture. Oh, I like that. So for me, even when we look at this sort of sunset, you could actually really mimic this on the gel plate easily by, you know, working these various color fields and getting this really etheric cloud type of feeling. It's so easy to do this on the gel plate. And the, look at this is our color palette. So I'll show you some of them that I pulled up and then I'm going to show you how to use them. Here's another one. I just love this. And it's funny, I'm not a really big blue person, but I do love turquoises and I do love Payne's gray. And so this is a beautiful way to see, oh, I can pull a little um, yellow in, a little bit of green, and it just makes the palette pop. This right here is just oh, earthy beautiful. So here's our color palette. Let's keep on looking. Here again, I'm just showing some various, um, when you use a lot of, when you look at a lot of the um, landscapes and things with horizon marks in it, you can easily see how this can be re recreated on the gel plate. And I actually would suggest that you experiment trying to recreate these exact images on your gel plate using masks, you know, using like the three color technique that I show um, as a part of like what I call my Mark Rothko. And then you can come in and do some masks to kind of create these mountains. And then, you know, you use this color palette. 
this these reds are just a beautiful here's another one this is just very etheric but we see all the colors and the same thing with oh i just love these succulents this is paper heart design again too um, and then here, this is a good one. Look at this butterfly. Look how gorgeous the color palette is. But you may just look at the butterfly and see it somewhere and not really know how to pull out the colors. What's the color palette? But here we have it right here, which is really nice. And so this is a good way to start also teaching yourself how to pull colors out and figure out your color palette by just looking at something in nature that you really like. And this is the same thing here, some more succulents. And look at this really broad range of colors. So let's take this one and let's start off. I have my cart um, of colors here. And let's just see how we can lay out and recreate these colors. And what's amazing about this is so this red, that crimson, goes nicely. We have this Persian red, which is kind of a pink. I have this sort of dusty, it's called portrait pink. It's not quite as dusty as that, but if I took just a little bit just a little bit of this or just a little bit of a Payne's gray, which is a color like this, just a dot of it. You can just turn this into a, a, a darker hue, but I would work these together nicely. Um, then this green is more of a golden green and it's, it's a bright. And so this gold green and goldens, it's, it's sort of a translucent because you can see when you can see the bars through it, you know it's a translucent. So that means that color is going to pop and sort of be a brighter for this top part of that. I also pulled this one. It's a, got a little bit of um, metallic in it and I like a little iridescence in my work. So I just thought that this could go here nicely and um, work and then we also have like a celadon green here. So just among what I already have, I've been able to do that color palette. And it's funny how you will generally be able to find that most of the colors you have, when you, when you gravitate to something you like, you will generally already have those colors. And maybe it's only a few colors you've got to go out and fill the palette in. So let's, let's do this with the butterfly. Let's see what we have here. So we have a cream there. I kind of have this sort of golden... This kind of comes, it's a gold, but it comes out in a tone like this. We could go with that. I know over here in Paper Artsy, I definitely have a, I don't want to do much dig, too digging, but I want to show you all that these colors, a lot of times we already have them. So I could, um, this is a little brighter. I have, I do have this exact color, but who knows where it is right now. Because I kind of wanted to be in the moment to really show you all. Okay, here. Here we are. So we can put that one there. And then within this green, we can come in with a... Like, I don't have that specific color of green. But you know what I probably do? Like, over here in my Artezas... Um, like right here, I have a whole series of Arteza small tubes. So I know that I would have a green in here that I could pop in that area. And then here would be a brown. And I also have that brown over here as well. So, you know, like you already have a lot of these colors. Just go through and have fun pulling palettes. The same thing here. Let's, let's look at this. So we have like a Payne's Gray. We have our celadons, we have some creams, this cream, and so this could go up here and here again. I could take one of my darker greens and um, from Marateza and put it in there. So all us also getting these box sets are good because you'll have... Um, and Arteza is really an interesting brand. Um, I, I want to stop and say this is not a promotional video for them, but I, I am on their brand team and I've been using this stuff for years and I absolutely love it. And the thing I like about Arteza, when you get their box sets, they have colors in there that are even hard to mix. Like if you had to go mix the color, it, um, it's, it would be more difficult because they really go in and do subtle gradations of color. I, that's what I really love about their palettes are sophisticated. So if you get a palette, you could literally very easily go in and begin to select things that are your color palette. So I wanted to take the time just to show you kind of just fresh out 
how this whole process works. I mean, right here again, look, we have that pink. We, you know, we have the greens. We have the creams. You know, we have this darker kind of Payne's color. And then in here, I have a burgundy, but I know I have the burgundy in there. So just have added. And then for me, I like to add, I love this um, Golden's Iridescent Bronze. I use it a lot in my work. So I'm always going to throw some metallics in. So I'm going to use a little bit of this. I love Aztec Gold. Oh my goodness, it's my favorite color. So anyway, Hope that's helped you there flush out the ideas around color palettes. The other thing I want to say real quickly here, I also do change the kind of paint. So when we're working on the gel plate, it's nice to have heavy body paints. It's nice to have chalk paints. This is a fresco or a chalk paint here with Paper Artsy. Blick Matte Acrylics. Love these because it gives a chalky surface. I also like flows. This is your the fluid acrylic, so this is more of a flow. So I really like using different um, paints on the plate. And that's because on the gel plate, when you use different viscosities of, of, of acrylic style paints or even watercolors, any of the paints, when you mix them, they pull off the plate at different levels of um, tactile so some paints will pull off clean some paints will leave a little bit behind and that's where I get a lot of my old wall techniques and a lot of my layers and builds up in one pool that I'm known for and it's because I'm using all different types of paints on the plate and they respond differently and when you do that you begin to learn the differences so always make sure that you're pulling different types of paint in. don't just use one brand or one paint company or one type of paint um, from that company because that does make a difference in the complexity and the sophistication of prints that you're going to pull off that plate. So that's it. That's everything. Um, any questions, comments, anything that you'd like a little bit more on, please put below. If you're new to my channel, please hit that bell for all. And if you enjoyed this um, video, please thumb it up and that helps send it out. YouTube says, oh, they like this video. Let's show more people because I would love more and more people to understand um, at a deeper level about the gel plate in really quick, quick, and also all types of, we're doing gel plate, but we're gonna be doing collage and just so many mixed media techniques without having um, a lot of trial and error. So love you guys. See you next week. From my studio to yours, lots of love and happy creating. Bye-bye.